Well, good morning. I'm sure that's tame compared to some of your road trips. How many of you ever had one of those trips that was, uh, yeah, yeah. So you're watching that like, that's not even bad. We've had some bad ones, so it's great to see you. I, uh, today we're going to talk about gratitude or grumble, and we're going to be looking at the Israelites, and we're mainly going to be looking at Exodus 16, but we're going to show you a couple verses. One of them is kind of my favorite just because it's almost like God's like, fine, you want meat? I'll give you that. And so you get to see it. Um, so here's the thing about gratitude or grumble, and here's what I'll tell you about it. So today as we talk about this, whether you're a Christian or not, here's the truth. If you will learn to practice gratitude, it will honestly make your life better. It'll reduce your stress. It'll help you to enjoy your family more. If you're married and you learn to be a person that gives gratitude to your spouse... And understand how much you've been blessed and how much you've been given. It'll make your relationship better. You ready for this? This is going to be a shocker. It can even make your workplace better. I know. I know. You ever been around somebody who grumbles all the time? You've been around those people? Are you sitting next to that person right now? I saw somebody look over. Don't do that. You're going to get in trouble. So here's what I know about gratitude. And one of the, one of the things and one of the truths. So do you know what this is? It's one of my, when I, when I have this in my hands, it's usually one of my favorite times. So this is a kayaking paddle, which apparently I forgot how to put together. So this is a kayaking paddle. Yeah, I think that's mostly right. Um, and uh, so I got to take my niece for the first time. She had never been in a kayak. And so I took her out uh, in a lake and, and we went kayaking. And I don't know about you, but I forget what I know. Like, some things are such habits. So I get in the kayak. She gets in the kayak next to me. I just start paddling and going, and she has no idea. So I had to come back to shore and say, okay, first of all, you have to hold the paddle, and you have to put it in the water so that it catches the water. And then I said, and if you want to turn right, uh, you paddle on the right. Wait, no. If you want to... Okay, if you want to turn right, you have to paddle on the left, unless you go backwards. And then if you want to turn right, you paddle backwards on the right. And then I confused her and should have just gotten quiet. And here's what I said. I said, I know it feels really awkward right now because it's not a habit. I said, but honestly, after you paddle for even an hour, it just becomes natural. You know that when you paddle on one side, it takes you the other way and you paddle the other way. And I said, it's just normal to paddle that way, but it becomes a habit. Here's what I know about gratitude or grumbling. If we're honest, there's other reasons, and I'm going to talk about those during the message. But for a lot of us, we're just in a habit of either being grateful or even more likely grumbling. Sometimes we just grumble just because we're used to it. We just think that's how life is. We're always watching out and watching people do things and criticizing them. And you know... I don't know if you've ever been to eat with somebody who eats healthy. That's fine. Eat as healthy as you want. But then they start to talk to you about your food and what you're eating. And you start thinking, this will be the last time we eat together, right? Because nobody likes that. Nobody likes to be picked at and corrected and constantly criticized. And when we look at this chapter... <laughs> These people, it's amazing to be, well, let me read the verses and then we're going to go back and see. So we're going to look at three things today. Number one is this, uh, we're going to talk about how gratitude becomes a gumbo. Number one, we forget our blessings. So I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go back to what happened right before this scene. So here we go. The whole Israelite community sent out from Elam and came to the desert of sin. By the way, I don't think that's a mistake that they were in the desert of sin because of what happens next. Here they go. Which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. So about a month after they came out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And this word for grumble in the Hebrew is this idea of basically um, a criticism. It's the idea of we don't trust you. We, we don't think you have the best in mind for us. Now, let me, let me give them a little credit. I don't know if you have ever been backpacking or camping with your family. And I don't know if you ever had to pack food for your family. But 30 days is a lot of food to pack. 
And so I'm guessing 30 days is gone and the food starts being gone. And we're thinking Donner Party at this point, right? <laughs> did I say that out loud? That was meant to stay inside. Didn't say that last night, did I? No. no. And if you don't know what the Donner Party is, that's what Google is for. So the Israelites said to the... What's the game we used to play? The, go out west and you had to do it on the computer and everybody died of dysentery. Yeah, Oregon Trail, same idea. Yeah, everybody died of dysentery. All right, so anyway, against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, listen to this, and, and this is what happens to our memories when we don't get what we want. If we had only died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. Now listen to this fake news recreation of history. You know, you think, well, that was way back then. That's why people recreate. 30 days. I mean, 30 days before this, Moses holds up his arms. The Red Sea passes. Charlton Heston goes through the middle, right? All the people cross. He turns back around, and they close back up. All those chariot guys are doing the backstroke, right? And Miriam sings her song of praise. And 30 days later, they're going, Moses, you're an idiot. It's true. I mean, this is a leader. This is, by the way, this is what it's like to be a leader, just so you know. It's a, what have you done for me lately, right? And so, so here they are, and they're saying, hey, we wish we, were, we had died back there. And here's how they remember back at the good old days. There we sat around. We don't even have to go any further. They were slaves in Egypt. Have you seen a few building projects in Egypt? Have you noticed some... There's still some around, you know, some pyramid-looking things, uh, uh, some sphinxes that during World War II we used for target practice. That's another story for another day. I mean, there's all kind of things still there. So they weren't sitting around, but let's just give them that. In Egypt, we were sitting around pots of meat. Between slave shifts, how did this work? And then he continued. Then they continue and ate all the food we wanted. But you brought us to this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Now they did not force people to go. It was like you know here they saw these miraculous. You know they had the plagues. You got the parting of the Red Sea. Before this, there was water that was purified. I mean just. All kind of miracles over and over and over. But what happened? They became fearful. They needed a Snickers. And, and the truth for so many of us is gratitude is so temporary for us. And grumbling is so natural. Have you ever noticed bad habits are easy and good habits are hard? Nobody has to wake you up in the morning and go, go ahead and sleep in. What? Why are you waking me up from sleeping in? But you have to wake up and go, I got to get up. I need to exercise. I need to do this. I need to pray. I need to have a quiet. I, I got to do oh, just one day. When you make an exception to the rule, you know what happens? The exception becomes a rule, right? And so grumbling becomes natural when we allow it to happen in our lives. But the truth is we can develop a practice of gratitude, recognizing what we've been given. You ever met somebody who's not satisfied no matter what? It doesn't matter what you do that's a little more. You know, they're the people who say how much money is enough, a little more. How much doing is enough, just a little more. Don't be that person. So how do you do that? Focus on what you've been given. When's the last time you made a list of what you've been given? See, we tend to be like the girl who got the car. I don't know if you saw the video a few years ago. This girl was given a car and she freaked out because it was the wrong color. And that video went viral, like millions of people watched it because she didn't get the right color car and lost her mind. And then you find out later that that video was actually sponsored, I think it was by Papa John's, and it was used as an advertisement for pizza. And we were all fooled by this fake thing. And then I was mad about that. Like, right? Isn't it amazing what we complain about? We're on I-95. We're going 78 miles an hour because that's the appropriate speed, even though it says 70. Right? And then somebody passes us going 95, and we say, what an idiot. And then somebody in front of us slows down to 73, and we say, what a doofus. It's like we're never quite happy, and we're looking for things to complain about. You can tell a lot about your heart condition based on what you say, based on what you think. Grumbling is a habit 
The Israelites had seen all these miracles and didn't appreciate it. And we tend to look at them and go, I would never be like this. Why is my internet so slow? <laughs> Do you not remember the beginning of the internet? Do you not remember? Do you not remember? Let me sign into my AOL account. <laughs> you got mail. I got mail. At some point, I'm going to have mail. Any minute, there's going to be mail, right? And now, we click on our devices, we click on our thing, and I did this this morning. I'm doing a sermon on gratitude, and this morning I went, what is wrong with this thing? <laughs> oh, you're disconnected from the internet, you got to. Isn't it amazing how quickly we go from being blessed to thinking that we deserve that blessing? If we're honest, that's really how we are. And gosh, how many of you have yelled at your copy machine? Come on now, right? right it's not fast enough. It's not doing enough. Right? I mean, they were doing printing presses with... Oh, look, page one. Oh, got a misspelling. Right? Just say it. So we forget our blessings. Number two, we become greedy. Have you ever heard of a scarcity mindset? I'm going to tell you about a scarcity mindset very easily. <laughs> what was the first thing that we had a shortage of when the pandemic started? You all remember? Yeah. Toilet paper. Do you know why we had a shortage of toilet paper early on? Now, later on, it had to do with supply chain. But early on, it was a supply chain problem. You know what it was? It's because people found out there was going to be a problem. So they went and hoarded toilet paper. And then Publix started saying, you can only have one. And I'll never forget checking out at Publix. I had toilet paper and paper towels. And I went to check out and they said, you can't have both of these. What? And I said, toilet paper it is. <laughs> right? And you were going to stores to get toilet paper. Of course, formula recently. So what's a scarcity mindset? It's this idea that you don't have enough and you kind of freak out. It's the reason people buy milk before hurricanes, which makes no sense at all. It's the reason people buy water. Did you know most of you can drink the water that's in your house already? Did you know that? You just need something to put it in. But we run out of water. Why? Because we're afraid. So we freak out. My dog buster. If you didn't know this, I've told you this before. My dog buster has a scarcity mindset every morning. It doesn't matter what time he gets up. It doesn't matter the last time he ate. He will go into the living room. Now, we have two do three dogs, and so we have two bowls of food. And Buster will look at the first bowl, and it's full, and he says, that's good, Dad. Thanks a lot. And then he goes to bowl number two, and it's empty. Oh, no. Buster will then scrape the bowl and look at me. Do you not hear that? He will stand in the bowl and look at me. Both of these bowls need to be full at all times, Father. One time, I didn't fill it. He pushed it into the kitchen. Now, that's scarcity mindset. It's the idea that you know you've been given a lot, but a little bit more would be better. And when we have a scarcity mindset and we're fearful and we're afraid and we're frustrating and we're scared of what could come next, we hoard. We have a house full of stuff we don't need. And they've actually done studies. Our stuff is making us miserable. We collect more and more stuff. And because of our more and more stuff, we are more miserable. Now, now Marie Kondo, I know, she, is that how you say her name? I know she's wonderful, but she's also a little crazy. You don't, you don't talk to your clothes. I, that's just weird. But, but the idea is really good that we need to clear out some of our stuff and, and quit just trying to collect everything because we're afraid we won't have enough. The Israelites did as they were told. So what happened? So God says, I'm going to send manna. And I heard a pastor describe manna as Krispy Kreme donuts every day. I think that's an exaggeration, but okay. The food wasn't great back then, by the way. Some of you have eaten, people have told me they ate in London and they're like, oh, have you guys been to London? Somebody told me they went to London and the food wasn't, it's not great, right? And so, so imagine food back then. Okay, not great, right? And so God's dropping manna from heaven and listen to what happens immediately. The Israelites did as what they were told and some gathered much, and we're in verse 17, and some little. 
when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. So basically, everybody had the same amount. Everyone gathered as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it till the morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. Why not? When you have a scarcity mindset, it makes you distrust everyone. And when you can't trust leadership, when you can't trust people, when you're afraid and your fear is above what you're being told, you think, well, I could do what you say or take care of myself. And so they didn't listen to Moses. They kept part of it till morning. And some of you do not like this word, but too bad. Full of mag some of it, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. So what happened? They said, we're going to take more. And God said, I'm going to make it so you can't. I think sometimes in America we have so much that God's allowed us to be discontent with even what we have. And I think when you and I recognize all we've been given and we begin to become grateful, we begin to trust God, then we actually can enjoy. You know, there's a verse that says God created everything for our enjoyment. So the question is, are you enjoying it? Or are you just collecting it? Are you enjoying it? Are you saying, God, I'm enjoying it. Thank you for what you've given. Now, I listed a few reasons why sometimes we grumble. I think sometimes it's because of fear. You know, like Buster, we think, I got one bowl, but I need two. Sometimes it's just honestly about control. The reason that people complain sometimes is just they want to feel like they're in control. So they feel like, well, if I can just say something negative, I'll feel like I'm somehow controlling things. Sometimes it's because we want to feel important. So we give our input that's not needed. Maybe what you're eating isn't so good. Maybe what you're saying isn't so good. Maybe you should try to eat a little healthier. Maybe you should try to talk a little nicer, right? Sometimes, just like Moses, they didn't trust him. And then other times, honestly, it's just a bad habit. We're so used to needing a little bit more, we think, well, I had one, I'll just take two. A hurricane's coming, so I'll get 45 bottles of water, right? Have you seen people going out with a grocery cart full of water? You know you got water at your house. I mean, you know, you don't want to say that. To me, but the truth is, that's, there's something in us because of self-preservation. When we don't trust God and we trust only in ourselves, we become angry. For, people fought over toilet paper. I, I want you to let that sink in. People fought. People with homes and bathrooms and indoor plumbing and air conditioning and showers fought, got in fist fights over toilet paper. Before hurricanes, they've gotten in fights over water. People with water got in fights over water. Why? Scarcity mindset. You get fearful, you get angry, you get frustrated. Hunger makes it worse. But the truth is, we all struggle with this sometimes. Listen to this verse. Jesus said this. Luke 12, 15. Jesus said to them, watch out! Exclamation point. Be on your guard, listen to this, against all kinds of greed. And then he reminds us that life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. There are extremely happy people who have very little. And I've had people who are very, very wealthy remember times that they weren't wealthy, and yet they were happy. Because as they collected things, life became about things. And when life becomes about things instead of about people, we're miserable. God did not create us to be alone with things. He created us to be with other people. So what can we do to counteract that? Here it is. Be generous with your resources. Now, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about your time. Go out of your way to be a blessing to somebody. Go out of your way to give something to somebody. Go out of your way to even give your time. Hey, you ready for this thought? Next time you're talking to somebody, look at them. That's the hardest thing for an ADD person to do, by the way. Because if I start looking at them, I'm like, they say something, right? 
I love this. John Piper says this, Do all things without grumbling. Why? You have a sovereign God who is on your side, who works everything together for your good. So gratitude becomes grumble when we forget our blessings, when we become greedy. Number three, when we just complain and criticizing. Criticize. Now, here's the truth for all of us. The older you, this, here's an old age test. You ready? You're all going to fail, just so you know, all right? You ready? Jack's going to pass because he's young. Here it is. Here's an old age test. If you complain when there's change, you've gotten old. That used to be a field. It had lots of trees. Look at all the houses they're putting in there. They moved my favorite spice in the store to another aisle. Can you believe that? Can you? Did it happen in tractor supply? <laughs> hey, Joe, all I can say is cue banjos. They moved my aisle. The older we get, and I'm not talking about physically older, the older we get, the more we like the way things are. Okay, let's just do an honesty test. How many of you have more than one chair in your house, but you tend to sit in one chair? Yeah, okay. See, old people. That's what we are. We're old people. I remember going to my grandfather's house and thinking, why does grandpa sit in the same chair every time? And then I realized, I sit in the same chair every time. I have ruined one chair in my... I probably need to rotate chairs. We tried that with my grandfather. He just sat in it in a different location. Right? That's us. We, we're creatures of habit. We like the way we go, the things we do. I totally get it. You've taken the Israelites, and as terrible as life was, they had homes with doors. How do I know they had doors? Because they put blood over the door before they left. And now, no doors. And you're traveling with lots of people. And I'm guessing lots of people you don't like. When before, you could just go in your house. I mean, I'm grumpy thinking about the life they're living. Right? They Yes, they're walking through the desert and they're headed to the promised land. And by the way, the reason they don't get into the promised land is because once again, they didn't trust God. And so often, the reason that we're grumbling and complaining is because we don't trust God. So I love God's answer in this next passage. And this jumps over to Numbers. It's the same type of story uh, and after they've gotten tired of manna. So, so they get manna for a while. They're having Krispy Kreme donuts for breakfast every day. And they're like, ah. Oh. So here's what it says. The rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing, wailing, and said, and by the way, I'm going to use my best whiner voice I can. Here we go. If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Time out. No cost? Did you not remember the slavery? Did you not notice the pyramids? No cost. Just saying. Okay. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. And I really hope Listerine. This is not the, you don't want to talk to people face to face who are eating this kind of thing. But now we've lost our appetite. We never see anything but this miracle from heaven called manna. A few verses later, God says, tell the people, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow when you'll eat meat. Oh, we're going to get meat and you'll eat it. You'll not eat it just for one day or two days or five days or 10 days or 20 days, but for a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and you loathe it. That's awesome, isn't it? Because you've rejected the Lord who's among you and have wailed before him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? Now, you can tell when I grew up, because when I grew up, there would always be some kid in your class who tried one of their parents' cigarettes or cigars. And so the parents' lesson to them would be, fine. Now, this is the old days, right? I'm talking about the old days. They'd say, fine, smoke the whole thing, right? And the kid's throwing up, and they're like, finish it. And the kid's sick, and they're like, finish it. Why? Because they didn't want their kid to smoke. So what'd they do? Coming out their nose. This is what God does to the Israelites. And here's the deal. We can develop an atmosphere around us that is complaining and grumbling. And it goes with us. We're like pig pen. 
Remember Pigpen had the dust cloud that came with us? Some of us carry complaining everywhere. Or you can complain, you can carry with you gratitude. I can tell you different churches that I've worked at, and some of them had a spirit of ingratitude about everything. We as staff got anonymous notes. They would circle things in the bulletin in red and turn them in every week to the secretary, all her mistakes. By the way, my answer to that is if you want to criticize what we do in the office, I have a job for you. You'll get paid exactly what the Israelites got paid in Egypt. Full salary. <laughs> zero plus zero. The truth is I've also worked at places where, the, the, where people were grateful. Guess which one I enjoyed working at more? By the way, very gracious church here. I, many people say, Eric, why don't we make a bigger deal out of Pastor Appreciation Month? And here's why. Because I've told the staff year after year, we don't need Pastor Appreciation Month. I have Pastor Appreciation Life. You guys are so good at appreciating me every month, we don't have to make a special month. Now, some churches do, so they need to have that every year. So that one church can at least say, we like you, Pastor, till next month. But here it's every month, so I always say, don't make a big deal out of it because I feel appreciated all the time here, and I'm grateful. Why? Because you are grateful people and a grateful church. And I want to encourage you, be that way in your home. You're creating an atmosphere for your children, so be careful what you say as you drive home. Be careful when you go out to eat that you're not constantly picking at what you're eating. Do you realize how good we have it, even when the burger's not quite done the way you want it? Do you realize all that we've been given? Now, I'm not saying you can't have a, I like this better than that attitude, but be careful that you don't become critical and angry and frustrated when you've been given, and I've been given so much. And 1 Corinthians says this, And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culminations of the ages has come. I love this in 1 Corinthians. There's lots of churches now and pastors who will say, You don't need to worry about the Old Testament. That's just old stuff. Don't even read it. This verse right here says, The reason why we have those stories is because some of the stories are non-examples. Eric, what about this story in the Old Testament where this happened? Yeah, don't do that. That's, that's what I would tell you. Don't do what they did. That was dumb. And that's the purpose of it. So you can read it and learn from them. Listen, I was the kid who learned not to touch the stove by touching the stove. The smart kid learned to not touch the stove by somebody else touching the stove. And we should look in the Bible and see what's happened and say, God, help me to have gratitude. Now, let me give you just a final example of how we slip into this. And I want to give this final point. Bless others with your words. It is so easy to say the negative and not say the positive. A few weeks ago, I, was cut, I cut down a tree in my yard after the hurricane. As I was lifting it, I turned and pushed it onto the pile. And I heard my knee make that popping noise that's so exciting. So for days, I would go, oh, and any time I would get up, I got in the habit of going, oh, dumb knee, oh, stupid knee, oh, that hurt, right? And I realized after a little while, I was literally complaining every time I stood up. Now, I can't imagine how tired other people were of it, but I was tired of it. And I said, why do I have to say that every time? I'm just not going to say it. I can feel it, but I don't have to say Ow, that hurts. I, it was revelation to me. And then I realized, you know what? When a political commercial comes on, I don't have to say, I hate these commercials. They're so ridiculous. Blah, 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 blah. Every single time. I don't have to complain every time I catch a red light. I'm from, you got to realize, I'm at least three generations from yelling at traffic lights. Now, before that, I don't know if it was policemen my great-great-grandfather was yelling at or what, uh, you know, in the horse. But I know stories about my grandfather, and I was with my dad as he counted how many cars would turn left in Miami and say, if these people would just go faster. Every time. And if we're not careful, we get in these habits of saying the negative every time, and I want to encourage you, let's get in the habit 
of being a blessing every time, of encouraging every time, of being grateful every time, of saying, God, thank you for what you've given me. And even when we have to do correction to our kids, and even when we have to deal with something that's negative, even then, we're appreciative for all we've been given. If you're here today and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. I'll be here after the service. I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. If you're walking online, watching online, you can send me a note. And if you're here today, you can just come up and we'll talk after the service. Maybe you're here today and as I said a few things, you went, oh no. That's okay. We all have things to work on. I have lots to work on. This morning as I was yelling at my phone, I thought, oh, you're a good example. But let's ask God to help us to walk in gratitude and thankfulness. Let's pray. Father, I do pray that you'd make us grateful people, thankful for all you've given us. Lord, we live in the wealthiest country in the world, and we are so grateful for all we've been given. Lord, we, we live in one of the easiest times to live, and we want to be grateful for all we've been given. And Father, in Florida, we're especially grateful for working air conditioning. So Lord, we pray that we would be thankful and grateful for all the things we've been given. Lord, thank you for this month where we remember to be grateful, but may we be grateful at all times. In Jesus' name, amen.